It's a collection of wild stories about animal instincts, human folly, and survival. The Trespass Collection brings award-winning, best-selling authors together in one collection. And this morning, we have Jeff Vandermeer with us, a New York Times best-selling author, to tell us more about it. I really love when you have a collection of stories. So what was it like curating a collection of short stories from these best-selling authors, including yourself, and how did this project really come about? Right, well, um, I was approached uh, by uh, Plimpton, who is in partnership with Amazon, and Heidi uh, Pittner, who's the co-editor on it. And uh, they asked me if I'd be interested in doing something nature related. And I said, yes. And uh, we came up with this trespass idea, which is basically, you know, a walk on the wild side, how we view and treat and interact with animals, uh, which I think is something that was a lot on people's minds during the pandemic when they were noticing their own backyards a lot more. And then, uh, you know, I've edited a lot of anthologies. And one thing I know is that you get great results if you have great writers, but also you have great writers who write in completely different ways. And so, you know, having Stephen Graham Jones and Sylvia Morena Garcia in the same anthology uh, was pretty amazing to me and Karen Russell uh, and, and all the rest. And um, uh, so, so, you know, these are writers that I really had wanted to work with in some way or be in communication with uh, and Trespass seemed like a good way uh, to do it. Uh, and then also, you know, I've been rewilding my yard here in Florida and uh, seeing, you know, how that creates even more of a wealth of uh, animal life and also sometimes uh, some uh, tensions with the neighbors. <laughs> and so, you know, that's something that I wanted to write about as well. And your story in the collection is wildlife. Where did this uh, idea come from and the story behind it? Well, you know, one thing is you got to let an idea steep for a while. So the first thing I did is I steeped it so that although it's set in a ravine like the one that we're our house is off of, um, that it's not really like that ravine. And also the, the, the people in the story are nothing like me or my neighbors. And so um, once I had hit that imaginative, uh, you know, crux and, and gotten past that, uh, I had this idea of this woman who, you know, for various reasons, uh, moves to this house on the edge of this ravine and then starts seeing some very strange things on the trail cams that she's put out that she's put out in part as security cams, part as, as to see the wildlife. And then also I was really curious to kind of like chart the, the interaction she has with her neighbors because I think part of trespass and part of how we, we view animals is also through the lens of how other people that we interact with see those animals uh, and, and, and whether that's a positive or a negative thing. And the story just kind of uh, took off uh, from there with some of the, the usual uh, unusual things <laughs> that you might expect uh, from the author of Annihilation. So It's fun because your novel Annihilation was actually adapted into a film starring Natalie Portman and has similar themes of interacting with both nature and the supernatural. So it's got to be interesting to see the translation between book and film, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I think uh, basically, you know, I'm somebody who is interested in also writing screenplays and whatnot, but I also learned through mimicry and I can really only understand something until I can see how it's put together. So really what I wanted to do is 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 um, let Alex Garland, the director, um, you know, do what he was going to do and then just kind of observe and learn from it so that for the next project, I could be more uh, proactive. So it really was this surreal experience of, you know, first of all, the movie has some touch points with the book, but it also veers, you know, quite, quite a bit from the book. And that was instructive too. I mean, it's actually a more surreal, a stranger movie than the book by the third act of the movie. Um, in some ways, uh, but it's also difficult to kind of put together because you see you go on the set and so you see some scenes being filmed that way and then you see a rough cut where not all the special effects are in and not all the voices like the the bear in Annihilation, as I recall, didn't have a voice, uh, the, the final voice, it just had some guy saying, you know, saying the words. So, um, so you get that and then you see it in the movie theater. So by that time, it's been so deconstructed that uh, it really is more of a learning experience and less of a getting to in experience it in the moment, if that makes any sense. So so I learned a lot from it and I plan on on using that to be uh, more proactive and involved uh, in, in, in the vision for the, the projects that are upcoming. And speaking of that, uh, any updates on your novel Born and the option from AMC to make it into a TV series? Yeah, there definitely is. And I, I unfortunately, I can't talk about it too much. All I can say is that AMC renewed the option for a third time and they did that for a very good reason. And um, 
and I'm really excited about about where it's going. And, and I do believe there will be news to announce later this year. But unfortunately, I can't talk about any of it. But I'm I'm very impressed with AMC and their tenacity with this project and their their passion to want to do it. Well, we can't wait to hear more. And quickly back to the collection. Where can viewers find it? Uh, it's uh, from um, Amazon Originals uh, and through Prime. It's free. All right, Jeff, appreciate your time. Amazon Publishing, the place to go for it. We'll have all this info on our website, lasvegasmorningblend.com.